Make sure you guys give me a follow over on Twitter. We are trying to get to 500 followers on Twitter by the end of the month of September. We've had previous goals in July and August, and you guys have helped me hit those marks, so I really appreciate that. We got a new goal here in September, trying to get 500 followers. Boss has said, do that or else. I don't really want to know what, what else means. Help me out. Hit that follow button at StoneShields underscore on Twitter. All of our Bengals content will be posted to my page. And once the season really kicks into gear here, a bunch of Bengals highlights will be up there as well. So give me a follow on Twitter at StoneShields underscore. Coming up on today's show, of course, we have to give a update on Jamar Chase. Didn't end up practicing yesterday. Bengals are off um, today, so we'll see how that continues to progress. We're going to spend some time on that, of course. We're also going to talk about Andre Yosevash and why you should buy stock in the Bengals' second-year receiver out of Princeton. Also, we're going to talk about some expectations for Jermaine Burton in 2024. Of course, the Bengals. Uh, one of their third round picks in this previous draft. Got a lot of talent, but also some red flags there. So we'll touch on that. Also, Lou Anarumo's defense here in 2024 looks a lot different than it did last year, especially from a personnel perspective as well as a scheme perspective as well. So we will talk about that. That's kind of our lineup for today's show. But without further ado, let's hop right into Jamar Chase. Um, again, he didn't practice Monday. The Bengals' season opener is in five days. I've sat in front of the camera and told you guys not to be concerned. I'm starting to get a little concerned about Jamar Chase and his um, ability to be out there week one against the Patriots. Zach Taylor said they're going to continue to keep taking things day by day. With the star Bengals wide receiver. Remember he had that one practice where he was out there where the Bengals' local media was not able to you know, view that practice, and then kind of Zach Taylor after that was like, yeah, we expect Jamar Chase to continue practicing. That was short-lived. He was back in street clothes and ultimately has sat out uh, several practices since those couple practices that he did participate in. So, again, team practice does resume tomorrow. They continue to really start their preparations for New England and week one. So here's what Zach Taylor said yesterday in regards to kind of just dealing with this whole situation with Jamar Chase. He said, there are always injuries and things you have to deal with, so we'll adapt to him. In other words, there's always things going on with an NFL team. This is just another thing that the Bengals have to deal with. He says, it's impossible for me to say with 100% conviction, but I feel good about the shape that he's in. I guess we'll see what exactly that shape looks like, but you know, for now, um, this is what we have with Jamar Chase. So I'm going to ask you guys once again, I'm going to continue to ask you guys this question. Will Jamar Chase play Sunday? Again, five days away. And um, at this point, you know, with the limited practice reps, is he going to look like the same player when he's out there? I think he will because I'm sure he's doing stuff on his own. Again, he had a long layoff. Um, obviously didn't play his last year at LSU, came into the league and looked outstanding. But Asking you guys this once again, will Jamar Chase play on Sunday? Type Y for yes or N for no is the pinned comment of today's show. So sound it off for us in the comment section. All right, the rest of the show, we're going to spend some time kind of talking about what Paul Daner Jr. broke down in his article for The Athletic this morning. If you don't follow Paul, make sure you do that. It does outstanding work covering the Cincinnati Bengals. One thing he said is you need to be buying the stock of Andre Yosevas. And that's something that I have you know said on this show um, you know, for a long time, uh, Yosivash. I always, I always say his name wrong. I apologize. Um, but I um, mean, you definitely need to be buying his stock. When you look at the Bengals having T. Higgins and hopefully Jamar Chase out there on the football field, the matchups for this guy are going to be absolutely unbelievable. Here's what Daner wrote in the Athletic this morning. He said his transition came with an Ivy League approach. He's been making requests of the video staff. He requested cut-ups of Keenan Allen and Larry Fitzgerald as he sought to replicate some of the best big-body slots in the history of the game. And, um, you know, I think he really did a good job separating himself from the other guys like Jermaine Burton and Charlie Jones and even Trenton Irwin to an extent in camp because, um, you know, he did a, a nice job um, really just showing them that he belongs as a, you know, guy that's going to play significant snaps 
for the Cincinnati Bengals this upcoming season. So, um, again, I'm really excited in what Andre Yosivash is going to be able to do with the Bengals. I think he's uh, garnered a lot of trust from Joe Burrow, which is something Jamar, or Jermaine Burton doesn't really have, which we'll talk about that here in a moment. But um, I'm really excited about this guy, and I do believe he is going to become a household name in 2024. I think he's really going to make a name for himself, and um, he's not going to look very much like a six-round pick. I can guarantee you that much. So over under seven and a half touchdowns for Andre Yossi Bosch in 2024. Sound off in the comments for us. He had four last year, so you know I put the number here at seven and a half. I think this is a number he's going to get over significantly, but let me know what you guys think in the comments section. All right, now we got to talk a little bit about Jermaine Burton and what his role is going to look like with this team. Despite his talent, the lack of professionalism has kind of been a concern for the coaching staff. You know, Al Michaels kind of had that comment about him potentially sleeping through meetings um, during the Bengals' uh, Thursday night preseason game. Um, you know, nothing has come out of that. It hasn't been confirmed or anything, but still, it's certainly a concern. We're going to dive into more about Burton here in a second. But first, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at Game Time because today's show is presented by Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Game Time Picks is the easiest way to find and buy tickets to live events. Look, I get Reds tickets all the time with game time. It's an incredibly straightforward process, and I get my tickets immediately with zero stress. Unfortunately, as a Reds fan, you know, I don't always see the best result, but game time helps me get those tickets with zero stress. You can also get ready for football season and get tickets to watch the Bengals. My two favorite features on game time. First, the all-in price. Toggling this feature shows the total up front so you don't have any surprise fees at checkout like a lot of other ticketing apps can get you with. And secondly, the views from your seat. You get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CHATSPORTS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Okay, so here's what Paul Daner Jr., again, going back to what he wrote in The Athletic this morning, had to say about Jermaine Burton. He said, when you consider the growth and breakout potential from Yossi Bosch um, and Jones, along with the extreme reliability of Trent Irwin, it's a long shot Burton will participate offensively this year without a rash of injuries. They will hope he progresses and matures in a year, uh, as the year progresses. Maybe he does. Maybe that opens opportunities. It sounds far more likely a redshirt year lies ahead than anything else for the intriguing rookie. And, um, you know, all, during the preseason, he certainly put up some good numbers. And the, when the ball went his way, he seemed to always make a play for Cincinnati. But the really issue with Jermaine Burton is just that reliability, right? There were so many reports of him, you know, running the wrong routes in practice, not being able to get that timing and chemistry down with Jermaine Burton. The comment Al Michaels made, I already, uh, you know, referred to that a little bit earlier, um, you know, uh, on in the show about him potentially sleeping through meetings. So there's certainly some question marks with Jermaine Burton, but, um, you know, I think you, at the same time, you got to have hopes that eventually he'll be able to be someone that can be productive on this team because the talent certainly is there. Make sure you guys are subscribed to our channel here at Bengals Breakdown if you haven't done so already. Hit that sub button, youtube.com slash Bengals TV. We'll have a watch party for you guys. 1 o'clock against, well, we'll be live probably around noon. Coming up on Sunday when the Bengals square off against the Patriots. Hopefully Jamar Chase is out there. But regardless, don't miss out on that. Hit that sub button right now. Last thing Daner talked about kind of the defensive outlook for the Bengals. I really found this to be kind of the most interesting part of his whole piece that he discussed. Obviously, their personnel is going to look a lot different this year, particularly on the back end. Von Bell comes back after his one-year absence. And up front, not having DJ Reader and having a guy like Sheldon Rankins being brought in as a free agent and him having to really step up into that role. So here's what Paul Daner had to say about the defense. Kind of gets into the weeds a little bit here 
as far as uh, some schematic stuff. But he said they will utilize a new style between the front four and linebackers due to the loss of two-gapping behemoth D.J. Reader. The four-man rotation of defensive tackles doesn't include anyone weighing more than D.J. Hill at 311 pounds. Of course, that is with uh, McKinley Jackson being on short-term IR. The run defense will rely on disruption, specifically from Sheldon Rankins, more than holding the point of attack. That could take an adjustment period. For Wilson and Pratt, the linebackers, of course, they don't just fill the lane reader holds open for them. They need to react to fill the opposite of whichever direction Rankins wins. So that's kind of interesting that, um, you know, it's a whole different way that they're going to have to try to stop the run. When you have a guy like DJ Reader no longer there, Sheldon Rankins and his play style is totally different. I just really found that part by Daner really interesting. And Logan Wilson also kind of talked about that. Um, you know, when he was talking to the media about how, you know, it's just kind of an adjustment as a linebacker because there's a different way that need, he needs to defend with a different guy on the interior of, the de of that defensive line in Sheldon Rankins. Again, a guy with a totally different play style. So we've talked about and brought up to you guys how the Bengals' ability to stop the run is kind of going to be a concern, at least for me right now. They didn't do a good job at, of all, at all last year stopping the run. So scale it for me in the comments section. What is your confidence level in Cincinnati's ability to stop the run? 1 to 10 in the comments. Again, this is where I'm kind of a little bit fuzzy with the Bengals. Not really know what don't really know what to expect here. And I think we're going to find out very early on, especially playing some teams that, you know, have either lackluster quarterback performance or just young quarterbacks that are really going to try to run the ball on Cincinnati. We'll see how they are able to do. Again, we're going to find out very quickly. But scale up for us 1 to 10 in the comments section.